if the economists had been right, Melbourne property values would have collapsed by now. But of course they haven't. Despite all the havoc brought by the pandemic and the economic shutdowns, Melbourne real estate has stayed very solid. A couple of days ago, SQM Research published its latest housing indexes, which showed that in May, Melbourne prices for both houses and apartments actually increased, only slightly, but in the current circumstances, even the smallest levels of growth are remarkable. Now, Melbourne's solid performance in May followed similar outcomes in March and April. And I think one of the reasons Melbourne prices have resisted the doomsday forecast is that supply and demand has remained roughly in balance. There are fewer buyers out there, of course, but there are also much fewer sellers. So generally speaking, one has balanced out the other. There have been fewer buyers at auctions, but considerably fewer properties being offered at auction. So clearance rates have been quite high as well. And despite an increase in vacancies as a result of the pandemic pressures, the overall vacancy rate for Melbourne remains below 3%. So that apart from the Melbourne CBD and the inner city suburbs around it, there's no major downward pressure on rents or sale prices. So against this background this week, we have published our new edition of top five Melbourne hotspots. In this report, we outline our selections for the best areas to buy, taking into account the current unusual circumstances and uh, outlining which locations we think are best placed to come out the other side of the shutdown period in a good position to grow as we move forward. So have a read of the new top five Melbourne report. I think Melbourne's always a leader in this country in terms of its economy, its population, and certainly its property markets. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Bye for now.